I began my China adventures mid-April 2009 by leaving Seattle with a connecting flight from San Francisco to Beijing. Over the next two months, I would travel mostly by train to these major cities that I'd circled on this map of China. They include Zhengao, Xi'an, Chengdu, Chongqing, Yichang, Changsha, Kunming, Dali, Lishan, Shangri-La, Shanghai, Pingao. Here are some of the highlights of my adventures. In Beijing, I saw Tiananmen Square along with the Forbidden City and the other sites. I ended my visit by taking a hike along a secret location of the Great Wall of China. I visited the Shaolin Temple, the home of the Kung Fu monks. Then in Xi'an, I would visit the terracotta warriors and climb one of Taoism's five sacred mountains nearby, Huashan. Okay, the nice night train thing. from Xi'an to Chengdu got me in early to see the pandas having their bamboo breakfast topped off with sugarcane treats. I caught a local bus out to see the largest Grand Buddha in the world in Lishan. It was then on to my three gorges Yangtze River cruise on the MS Yangtze Pearl. Following that, I went to Changsha and Shaoshan, the birthplace and home of Mao. From Guilin, I visited the Dragon's Backbone Rice Terraces. <laughs> <laughs> I then took a beautiful cruise down the Li River to Yangshou and Qingping. While in Yangshou, I took bike rides out in the countryside along with a fun bamboo boat ride down the Yulong River. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> to escape the rains, I took a train all the way to Dali. It was then on to the river-filled village of Lijiang, with its walking streets, restaurants, and variety of entertainment. The next bus ride dropped me off at the start of the Leaping Tiger Gorge Trail, where I joined up with three other travelers to hike the trail in two days. It was then on to Shangri-La by bus to visit the Ganden Sumselling Gumpa. Retracing my travels, my next city was Shanghai. The pollution was so thick, I never saw the sun, even though there was not a cloud in the sky. The last place I visited was Pingyang, a walled city I found on the way back to Beijing. I'm using clips of the shows as transitions between major locations. Here's the first. Okay, this is the way to Tiananmen Square and the Forbidden Palace. It's a recreated street scene. This is the entrance to Tiananmen Square. Lots of people here. Lots of Chinese tour groups are gathered in front of the Gate of Heavenly Peace with Mao's portrait. This is the start to the line to Mao's mausoleum. It opens at 8 and the line looks like it goes forever. And it winds around the front of the building a couple times, back and forth in the serpentine manner. Okay, this is Chairman Mao's tomb. Okay, this is the monument to the people's heroes. Here's a group of ethnic Chinese enjoying their tour of Tiananmen Square and the Forbidden City. The crowds of tourists and tour groups with their matching hats and leaders holding flags surged through the Forbidden City grounds and in some places were as crowded as any mosh pit or Walmart sale. Okay, it gets a little crowded here. It's the Hall of Imperial Peace. This is the Imperial Garden. This is the Imperial Mountain. The 
The drums were beaten to mark the hours of the day during the Ming Dynasty. I visited the hutong that is surrounding the bell tower in the foreground. A trip to China would not be complete without a rickshaw ride through one of the hutongs and a visit to a home there with its enclosed courtyards. On my way into Temple of Heaven Park, I saw a number of locals enjoying themselves by dancing, playing cards, chess, and playing musical instrument and other games like badminton. This is the hall of the hall for good harvests. This is the Echo Temple. You see similar sloped sculptures like this on several buildings throughout China. In Chinese myths, the dragon symbolizes the creator of heaven and earth, the spirit of unity and cohesion, of opening up and changing, like China itself. Here's the Stella Forest. Okay, this is kind of a wishing wall. This is the punish department, punishment. The Dong Yu Temple is a Taoist temple that features various departments of Hades and punishments. Okay, here's the animal department. This is the Lama Temple. This is the most known Tibetan Buddhist temple outside Tibet. This is the site of the 2008 Summer Olympics. And here's the bird's nest. Aquatic Park. Okay, this is the way to the food market, night food market. The foods here are somewhat strange to Western palates, to say the least, which includes starfish, seahorse, beetles, and still alive scorpions, all on sticks and ready to be deep fried. I don't think this will taste like chicken, though. Okay, hey, we're going up the secret wall of China there. Here's our guide. And there's Wu Chan, my guide. Our guide. Up to the secret wall. Six of us followed our guide, Wu Chan on this five kilometer hike along an overgrown portion of the Great Wall, which was about a half hour drive to the west of Badlin. At the end of our tour, our guide took us to a local restaurant where we feasted on a local fair. Our chicken soup had the head and feet floating about just to prove that we were really eating chicken and not something else. Okay, that was my little ride to the train station. I am now on my way to see the Shaolin Temple, just outside uh, Zhengzhou. I enjoyed my train travels and usually found good accommodations, good and cheap food in the areas around the train station. This is the train station area. chanting and jogging monks that were coming up from the exercise grounds reminded me of my basic training days in the army. After years of watching David Carradine in the Kung Fu series, I just had to see for myself the Shaolin Temple and its monks. Okay, all the different monk groups are getting their training down here. This monk was having still photos taken of his action poses. Yeah, this is the Shaolin Temple. Again, the Chinese tourists dominated the visitors. I saw very few Westerners. 
this performance was similar to the acrobat acts you see throughout China. South Gate and <clears throat> building. Xi'an was where I visited nearby places like Huashan Mountains and the Terracotta Warriors and took in the walled city sites, acrobat and opera ships. The old bell and drum towers provided quite a contrast to the modern shopping malls, the busy cars and the buses and the ongoing transit construction projects. They offer frequent performances at the bell tower and drum tower that are quite enjoyable. I am auditioning for a drummer job. And this is the Hall of the 1000 Buddhas. This is the Xi'an Mosque. It is the largest mosque in China. These are the openings to the prayer room where they are currently chanting. Now that prayer time is over, here's a glimpse of the room. top of the Flying Goose Pagoda, looking north to the rail station. Small Wild Goose Pagoda and Jainfu Temple. This is the uh, Qin Shi Hong Mausoleum. It was the most famous mausoleum ever and uh, this guy united the country and standardized the coinage. But he was ruthless, and when his son took over, the dynasty ended by revolt. Seeing this army of terracotta warriors in the huge hangar is really breathtaking, and the site is only partially excavated. There are over 6,000 warriors and horses here. It was recently discovered in 1974. These were made around the 2nd century BC, and they say that all of the workers were killed following the completion of the project. They used molds for the figures, but artists individualized each warrior and animal. across the excavation pit that they haven't done yet. These are some wires they pulled out. Here's kind of the assembly area. This is pit number two. This has about 1,300 warriors and horses. You can see there's not much. Here's a little spot they've opened up down here. This is Chiang Kai-shek's headquarters and also where he got uh, overturned by two of his generals that tried to talk him into going with the communists, but he didn't, so they overthrew him. staying down at this hotel I'm gonna screen to next. I'm staying at the Huyang Hotel. Okay, this is my cook. He's gonna make me good breakfast. Ooh. 
Entrance to the Huashan. Huashan is one of Taoism's five sacred mountains. I hiked up from the bottom to all of the five peaks. Okay, this is the first pass. The different uh, restaurants along the way up to the top. Yeah. Okay, now it starts to get a little steeper with uh, stairs. We're at uh, about 980 meters. We started at 500. It took me over eight hours to hike up to all of the peaks. There are lots of very steep stairs cut into the granite face of the mountains. Some wear white gloves to protect <laughs> their hands. The chains provide some safety along the trail. Now that I've run into lots of people who have gotten to the summit of the North Peak by taking the cable car, It is just beginning to rain as I approach these very steep stairs on my way to the Green Dragon Ridge. This ridge is very steep to climb and has sheer drop-offs on each side on the way to the east and west peaks. I am now on the Green Dragon Ridge. It is steep and with sheer drop-offs on each side. Okay, this is Waiun Peak. <sighs> In the fog. <sighs> okay, here they're making little locks for couples. You can see all of the locks with the red ribbons that lovers have left here. This is the East Temple, and here's Eastern Peak. And there's the trail. The South Peak, very cold, very windy, very rainy. There's the obelisk for the South Peak. Okay, this is West Peak. The West Peak, and there's this big dome rock with a cave inside. Pretty amazing. I think I'm gonna get off this mountain. This is the steepest. It's like a ladder. Pretty steep. I rode the cable car down since it was raining harder and getting darker. train from Xi'an to Chengdu got me in early to see the pandas having their bamboo breakfast wow. topped off with sugarcane treats. <laughs> Here is a panda acrobat wannabe. Had a good meal there. <laughs> This baby panda is being weaned away from its mother's milk. They are feasting on sugarcane treats. <laughs> he is no acrobat. Okay, this is Chengdu, and there's the statue of Mao. 
in front of the Sichuan Science and Technology Museum. This is one of the tea houses in Chengdu's People's Park. The park was filled with people enjoying each other, whether it was for drinking tea, boating, dancing, performing, or playing badminton. I caught a local bus out to see the largest Grand Buddha in the world in Lishan. Okay, there's the people up there. See how small they are? There's the foot of the Buddha and the stairs going down. <laughs> and there's the Buddha's face. It is 233 feet high. And then the people, the way they do it, is they queue up going down and up, but today's a good day. So the crowds aren't too big. There's the stairs down to the Buddha's foot, which I'm going to take in a minute. to my Three Gorges Yangtze River Cruise on the MS Yangtze Pearl for three nights and four days from Chongqing to Yichang. Okay, here's the Erhat Temple in uh, Chongqing. Hey. It's a hall full of Erhats. Erhats are people who have reached enlightenment by following the teachings of others. Spooky. Okay, here's one of the boats I'll be going on. Here's the confluence of the Jiajing River and the Yangtze River. Many cities in China feature night light shows on their structures. We're heading out of Chongqing on the Yangtze Pearl. Lots of polluting cities here. Taoists believe that spirits reside on this mountain temple and are so numerous they named it Ghost City. And this is across the river to the city of Fengdu. Okay, here's a sample of some of the ghosts on the way to this temple. First put them on hell, make them suffer. First punch them. So they are ten soldiers. Ten soldiers of hell here. Is the White Emperor City. This place was established back in the first century by a soldier who named himself White Emperor and was a place of peace and harmony. This is the West Gate we're coming to. Yeah, it's the West Gate. South yeah. Temple Gate. Yeah, South Gate. We're leaving the White Temple into the fog. Hmm. One of the stops along this cruise was to go on a smaller boat up one of the narrower river gorges. We went up the Misty Gorge near Wuxia. It says Misty Gorge. These travel guides sure like to talk a lot. Herbert, the cruise line guide, explained that the Chinese tourists really enjoyed viewing the Three River Gorges when it was rainy and misty because they could then imagine magical and mysterious things. The only thing I could imagine that it was wet and cold and that my view was obscured. 
The farewell party was lots of fun, many toasts by travel buddies, and a fun show put on by the crew staff and tourists, which included songs, dances, fashion show, and playful dragons. Even I had to perform. Fortunately, my singing was not taped. Gorgeous Dam, we're at Yichang, and lots of boats tied up. The boats going through these locks take three hours to go through and are raised or lowered by 600 feet. This dam will be the largest in the world when filled. It is 607 feet tall and one and a quarter miles wide. It will produce as much electric power as 18 nuclear power plants. It costs $75 billion to complete. One and a half million people will eventually be re relocated. It will improve navigation and flood control. This is number one teacher's training school in Changzhou, where Mao taught. We'll be going inside here in a minute. The head of the Communist Party building in Changzhou, where Mao worked. And he also got married here. He's the former residence of Mao. There's the pond he swam in. Okay, here's his home. Back side of it. Okay, that's the neighbor's house, and they joined up the two houses, so they have a joint uh, banquet hall right in the middle. And then the kitchen, and then the bedrooms are on the uh, extension here. Here's the primary school he went to. In Shaoshan. This is Mao's ancestral building. Chanta. The National Defense University. Ah. Like the Western Point in America. Ah. They are honoring Youth Day, May 4th. <laughs> Gulin after taking the night train from Changsha to some morning rain. It's a beautiful city surrounded by karsks and rivers. Their town square has glass pyramid replicas of the ones found at the Louvre in Paris. This is the palace, Central Palace. It's burned down by the Japanese and rebuilt in 1947. Solitary Peak Park gives you some great views of the surrounding area. This is Lu Song's reading cave. Came here to read. It's underneath the mountain. It's the entrance to the Peace Cave. 
Linda. Daniel, come on, follow me. Tourists have a lot of fun dressing up in the dynasty garb for photos. A view of the Lee River. Night markets are popular in all cities. From Gulen, I took a tour of the Dragon Backbone Rice Terrace. Here are long haired Yao vendors making and selling their goods to tourists. Oh, I know. <laughs> We now cross this suspension bridge to watch the long-haired Yao performers. The women will cut their hair once at 16 years to symbolize eligibility for marriage. During the marriage festival, the grandmother will deliver the hair cut, which she has made into an ornamental headdress to the husband's home as a souvenir. We are now starting our hike up the hilltops to view the rice terraces and stop for lunch along the way. Each season brings its own beauty to these rice terraces. They are now in the process of flooding and planting the rice. For 20 eon, we have our pictures taken with these costume beauties. <laughs> Finally, I was able to enjoy a beautiful boat cruise along the Li River from Guilin to Yangshou. The scenery was spectacular. Here are some foolhardy vendors on their bamboo raft trying to sell trinkets to the tourist board. This is Nine Horses Hill, straight ahead. Use your imagination. Okay, we're beginning to come into the area called Qingping, where the back of the Yon 20 is features the landscape. All of the cruise boats are arriving at Yangshou. Now boats are returning to Guilin. The vendors have set up along the way from the boat landings. Here's a view of the walking street surrounded by these karsts from my balcony at the Bamboo Hotel. Bicycle out in the countryside with, with Mickey as our guide and student, English student, Willie. Yes. 
wheelie is going to be joining us, so we're going to have fun. There you go, John. What could be more? Then we go across the bridge. There's Mickey again. <laughs> Here are the bamboo rafts are lined up and people getting on them. We have our bicycle on the back and Mickey's gonna join us at the end of the trip. See you later. See you later. Yeah, for you. Alright. Bye bye Mickey. Hey, so take care of uh, Here we go. Oh. 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 <laughs> we would go over a series of these coffer dams on our way down the Yulong River. Li Li and I decided to try our hand bamboo <laughs> 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 So you are gonna a better job? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> it's harder than it looked. It is a tradition for the boatmen and tourists to sing while rafting. The biggest one, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Oh. 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 We rejoined Mickey in her hometown and had lunch with this view of Moon Hill. You are looking at Camel Mountain as we return to Yangshou. Lots of nightlife, entertainment for all the tourists. This production on the Li River is directed by Zhang Yimou. He is the same person who directed the Summer Olympics opening ceremony. This involves over 600 performers, and my video clips do not do this justice. Okay, this is the second day of the bicycle trip around Yangshou with Mickey. This time it's sunny. So Mickey has her hat on <laughs> and her sleeves. <laughs> Here is a sample of the trails we traveled along the Yulong River and amid the farmlands. Yeah, good. Okay, this is the Dragon Bridge. Okay, this is Jaizen Temple, built in the uh, 
700 Green Lotus Peak Park in Yangshou. Because it was so rainy, they closed this trail. Qingping. In the rain. This is the view of the Li River from the rooftop of this old place hostel in Qingping. More rain. Time to head to sunnier places. After bus and a night train from Guilin, I arrived in sunny Kunming on my way to Dali. Kunming is a modern city, yet still retains some old familiar buildings like a wall gate and a tall pagoda surrounded by building cranes. After another night train ride, I arrived in Dali and took a bus to Old Dali, which is a real beautiful tourist destination. In the distance, you can see the mountains, the lake, Erhai Hu, and the three pagodas. The sounds of silver hammering permeates the air. Lots of souvenir shops, and they seem to specialize in silverware. The tallest of these three pagodas is 230 feet high with 16 tiers, built in the 9th century. Okay, here's the front of the Dali uh, Middle School. Here are the students that invited me to speak to them during their English class. They asked me a lot of questions about life in America and what teenagers enjoyed doing. Here is the Tibetan Lodge and the cafe where I stayed and dined some. This is a wishing pergola where people leave their wishes on these ceramic wind chimes. Here is a rooftop view of the old Lijiang where tourists roam. Here is the view of the other Li Zhang.
All along, here are restaurants and gift shops. I enjoyed my stay in Lijan because of the cobbled, windy streets along channels of water. I stayed at the old ancient stone bridge inn here on the left. Uh -huh. Entertainment varied from street folk dancing, street musicians, to discos, karaoke's, and the Noxie Music Orchestra. As this group warms up, more and more tourists join in on the folk dance. There are other venues as well. This is uh, Jane's guest house. This is the start of the Leaping Tiger Gorge. I immediately joined up with Lydia from San Francisco, joined by Rolf from Holland shortly after starting. And then I didn't get much attention. Lydia, you changed color. Huh? You changed color. Now you're downstairs, you're still alive. The horseman offered tired hikers the opportunity uh, to ride the trail instead of walking. Meow. Meow. <laughs> At the halfway hostel where we stayed for the night, we joined up with Gretchen from Washington, D.C. and Alistair from the United Kingdom to complete the two-day trek. The views of the gorge and the mountains were amazing from our rooftop inn and restaurant. The beers were cold and soothing after a long day of hiking. There's the rock the tiger leaped over. We did not bother to hike down from here to view his paw marks left on the rocks. Instead, we did a cheesy pose in front of Tina's guest house while waiting for our exciting ride back to Jane's guest house. Whoa! <laughs> This is Shangri-La. Folk dancing in the square was very popular with tourists and locals as well. The rain dampened our enthusiasm to go out and see the annual horse racing festival. This giant prayer wheel was originally built for tourism, but now the Buddhists in the area have made it their own. There are about 600 monks at this 300-year-old Tibetan monastery.
These monks have the hungries. Pretty schmertzy out there. The bunt is under big construction. And it's a murky day. These renovations are for the World Expo that opens May 2010. The amount of building projects here and throughout China is astounding. When the government wants to build something, it happens very quickly and efficiently. Okay, this is the bunt. One wonders about the environmental controls, safety, and displacement issues, though. For a couple of yuan, you can get a river tour with great views of the skyline of the commuter ferry. Okay, this is the Hyatt. It's a schmutzig day. This is the underground tunnel from Pudong over to the Bund in Shanghai. This is the old town area, which includes Yuyan Gardens and Bazaar. These gardens were created during the Ming Dynasty. This is the tree-lined French concession area. This is just around the corner from the communist headquarters here in Shanghai. This is called Xin Shindi. Here's where the communist party headquarters is in Shintindi. This is the walking street area where most of the commercial shops are found. When you tire of walking, you can take these elephant trains to your next shopping destination. Okay, this is the famous West Lake, Hangzhou. To escape the polluted air of Shanghai, I took a short bus ride out to Hangzhou and spent the day relaxing and meeting some students at the various restaurants and coffee shops that surround the West Lake. What's China without an opera scene as I prepare to go to my last city in China? Pingyao. Pingyao is another preserved and restored walled city focused on the tourist trade with its museums and performers. It's a banker's residence.
Here is a view of the hostel I stayed at from one of the gates to the old town. Hey, this is the south gate. Oh, wait, 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 wait,